Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A woman says a trip to Target ended with her being attacked in the parking lot. Only a fellow shopper seeing it go down saved the day. Troy police say they are investigating what happened in the very well-traveled and popular shopping center parking lot. Good to have you with us at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. The alleged attack happened Friday near Coolidge and Maple Roads. That's where Amara McDonald is live tonight. And Mara, Troy police isolated some images of the man they're looking for. They did, Kimberly, off of surveillance video, and the quality of them is just sort of so-so. All of that said, if you know this guy, you're going to recognize him. Take a look. Troy PD sending us three shots of the man they're looking for, described as 30s, tall, thin, billed black man with light skin. Word of the alleged attack is taken off on apps like Nextdoor and social media. Candace, who lives around the corner, was out for a walk with Coco tonight, their usual route. Now, she usually doesn't log in to Nextdoor, but... All my friends texting me, I decided to log into Nextdoor this afternoon, and it did really take off. The woman who says she was attacked posted a lengthy description of what happened on Facebook, but declined to be interviewed. She says she was at her car when he came up on her, forced her door open, hit her in the face, showed her a gun. She yelled. Another shopper saw her and yelled, and he took off. Local 4 safety expert Darnell Blackburn, who spent years in law enforcement, says the choice of this location is unusual. That's not easy access to the freeway. I mean, you can get to a freeway, but it's it's a high traveled, high traffic area, especially in the summertime. So they wouldn't normally choose a route like that unless somebody was on a bike. Back here live, and it's not clear if this man was on foot, if he was on a bike, or if he actually had a car. Meanwhile, the woman who says she was attacked says she has multiple facial fractures. Troy PD says it's investigating. We're live in Troy tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thanks. New at 11, Rochester Hills Police need your help finding a missing 79-year-old woman. Mary Sullivan was last seen in the Huron County Bad Axe area around June 29th at 6 p.m. That's up in the thumb. Police say she was driving a 2019 gray Honda HRV with the Michigan license plate DUY 4806. $5,000 reward is being offered for any tips that lead to locating Mary. So if you've got any information, call Rochester Hills Police. Well, after a lovely day, severe weather could be uh, moving its way into the metro Detroit area. Kim Adams joins us now with a look at what's in store, Kim. Well, it's a very slight risk tomorrow. In fact, we're in the marginal risk as far as the Storm Prediction Center goes. Uh, it goes from marginal up to high, and we're at the lowest threat level for tomorrow. So not everyone gets the storms, and not all the storms will become severe, but those that do could produce high wind and also some hail. And then on Wednesday, we do it all over again with a chance of those storms south of mainly I-94, but as far north possibly as M-59. But for tomorrow, the main two threats will be high winds and hail, a lower risk of flooding and a very low risk of any rotation in those cells. So for tomorrow, no problems for your morning commute. Nice and dry. We'll actually have a nice morning with some sunshine. Temperatures will be in the 70s. You'll notice a little more humidity tomorrow and a bit warmer with those highs getting into the upper 80s. Factor in a cold front coming through and all those ingredients coming together. We do have a chance of storms between 4 and about 8 o'clock tomorrow night. I'll time it out for you hour by hour and we'll talk about the rest of the week in a couple of minutes. Hey, Kim, thank you. Residents in Livonia want something done about the deer taking over their neighborhoods. Homeowners are now hoping for a solution from wildlife experts and city leadership. Pamela Osborne live now. She's been following a meeting uh, that's being held tonight, but still no decision, Pam? That's right. No decision has been made as of yet. So we really wanted to talk to people who live in Livonia about this issue. We ended up here on Fairfield Street. We stopped when we saw this deer crossing sign and within a matter of minutes, we actually saw one crossing down the road down there, a car stopping, waiting for that deer to go by. One thing is clear. There are a lot of mixed feelings about what to do about this, and the majority of people seem okay with City Council and the City of Livonia taking its time to get the answers to these questions before they do something. Baby fawn, 
Like you can see where Charlene Dunford has seen it all. Matted him down, come just shot out, and the mom had her baby in my backyard. This 10 point buck, just one of the many visitors they've had at their property. We had no idea that the wildlife around here. Over the years, Livonia residents say they've seen a noticeable uptick in the deer population, prompting city leaders to come up with a solution. Some residents have called for a call to thin the population. At Monday's city council meeting, we had many residents who shared their stories and encounters with deer in their yards. They voted to join the Urban Deer Coalition, a regional group which keeps a close eye on the deer population. We're running out of options. You guys need to do something. After learning more about population management options, they plan to vote. Charlene doesn't want to see a call. I do understand it's frustrating, but at the same time, look where we live. She's found solutions that keep deer away from her plants and hopes others can learn to live with them too. There's really nowhere for them to go because everything is getting all built up where we are the ones running them out of their woods. I mean, it's sad. So what are we supposed to do? Just deal with them. So you may be wondering where the DNR is in all of this. That was part of that vote to join the Urban Deer Coalition. Um, they're going to be able to have more access to the DNR because they simply don't have the resources to address every individual's community's concerns. But this regional group will give them access to that information. And from there, they will make a decision on how to move forward. Reporting live tonight in Livonia, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. All right, Pamela, we'll stay on it. A former Warren police officer is now facing a federal charge in a jail assault that was captured on camera. We told you about this incident back on June 13th when it happened. Investigators say the video shows then officer Matthew Rodriguez hitting Jaquan Smith, who was arrested. Rodriguez has been fired since that incident. Misdemeanor charges are being dropped. The new felony charge carries up to 10 years in prison. Former Detroit City Council member, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Watson, has died. Watson served on the council from 2003 until 2013. She was the first woman to serve as executive director of the Detroit chapter of the NAACP. She's been senior pastor at Westside Unity Church. Watson was recently appointed to the city's first ever reparations task force. Uh, there is no word yet on a cause of death. Joanne Watson lost at the age of 72. An Oakland County jury will decide the battle over Aretha Franklin's estate. Her family found two handwritten letters inside her home after her death. A jury will look over each note and decide if those two letters will be considered her will. Three of her four sons are involved in the dispute. Ted White II argues papers dated in 2010 should control the state, while Kekath and Edward Franklin favor a 2014 document. Jurors will head back to the seats tomorrow when the trial continues. $675 million up for grabs in tonight's Powerball jackpot. So time now to check the ticket numbers. Here are the winning digits for this evening. 2, 24, 34, 53, 58. The Powerball is 13 with a multiplier of 2. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. Good luck.